Hi there everyone, once again we're in the library at the Zoological Society of London and today we're going to tell you about the most incredible, remarkable woman you've probably never heard of. And it's not Anne Silf, the librarian, <laughs> she's the one who's going to be telling us about her though. This is Joan Proctor and we have so much stuff here about Joan Proctor that your minds are going to explode. Anne, where do we start? Oh, I think we've got to start right at the beginning, don't okay. we? So, Joan was born 1897 and she was interested in nature from a young age. This book was given to Joan by her sister on her 13th birthday and it's a beautiful little book from 1865. It has a lovely inscription inside, a dedication from Joan's sister Christabel. Oh, it's very fragile but if we look inside this is a book all about reptiles and, and amphibians and of Great Britain and there are pictures of lizards and snakes and all sorts oh look at that oh, some beautiful colour plates she started to write to George Boulanger who was the curator of reptiles and fish at the Natural History Museum and he began to mentor her and he encouraged her to write this a uh, paper about pit vipers and this was published when she was only 19 and this is her hand written manuscript. So this is a girl, a young woman, mm. who's being mentored by this guy and he's obviously seen a real talent. Yeah. She's young for anyone to be doing this and then she's writing a full-blown scientific paper. She read the paper there and then it was subsequently published in our proceedings. On the variation of the pit viper. I mean, you don't expect people to write scientific papers at that, that age now. No, when I was 19, I think I was just playing video games. <laughs> she continued to publish um, papers in the proceedings throughout her life. But she was friendly with George's son, Edward, who worked here as curator of reptiles. And he recruited her to help with the development of the aquarium here. So she's got a job now here at, yeah. at the zoo itself. And then she was here for a few months helping with the aquarium. He was promoted to curator of the aquarium and she was appointed as curator of reptiles and amphibians. So this is her staff record card for the whole time that she was at ZSL yeah. and you can see her starting salary was £360. Doesn't seem very good now. <laughs> she got a pay rise a year later, she goes up to 500. Yes, I think that says she began to progress designing the aquarium, designing other buildings and then eventually designing the reptile house. But the aquarium, apparently her and Edward managed to source lots of fish but they didn't manage to source any seaweeds in time for the grand opening. Right. And this is the opening by George V and Queen Mary. Oh wow. And Joan used her talents to make artificial seaweed to put in all the tanks from rubber, which apparently looked very realistic and impressed everybody. Okay, so like the king and queen are coming and they're like, we need seaweed. seaweed. <laughs> it's all right, I've got a plan. <laughs> we'll make some fake seaweed just for today. And there's the king and the queen at the opening. This would have been a pretty big day. Oh yeah. For the zoo yeah. and for her. And for her. Yeah. What's this? So this is a Komodo dragon. This is Sumbawa, who was Joan's allegedly pet Komodo dragon who lived in the zoo. She used to walk him around the zoo on a <laughs> lead. Right. Oh, there we go. Someone's having a pat. I know, it's a very brave child or very brave parent allowing their child to do that, I think. That would have been quite the sight, wouldn't it? So her major achievement when she was here was designing the reptile house. She used something called Vitaglass, which allows UV light through to keep the reptiles healthy. Okay. And that was the new technology at the time. And it's still used for reptiles and amphibians. There you go. What a legacy. Well, when she was appointed, there was a huge amount of interest in the press. And she compiled this volume of press cuttings, which she then commented on. You talk about a great deal of interest in the press. Because she was a woman right. appointed to a curator job. It was unusual for a woman to be in that sort of role. Oh. But then to have an interest in reptiles and amphibians, which just seemed unheard of. She's annotated it here, the official announcement in the Times, woman curator of reptiles. And if we look at some of these other articles, girl snake expert. I particularly like this one down here. She says that the whole interview was invented. Apparently the reporter was shown into the drawing room of her parents' house and there wasn't actually an interview. Almost every single headline <laughs> has woman as the first word. Zoo's lady curators. And then, oh yes. Okay, yeah. So this is meant to be an interview with Edward George Boulanger, who is curator of the aquarium. So there's all these quotes from this chap and she's saying he never gave the interview. 
I get the impression she didn't like the press. I don't think they were treating her particularly well, though. I mean, she obviously resented all the interest. Yeah. I mean, as a librarian, you must you <laughs> must love this. Like that, she kept this. Is this is I gold? I think it's just brilliant. This is gold. I wish you. more of our curators had done something like this. Yeah. Because although we've got the formal minutes and things in our archives, having these informal snapshots almost yeah. it's just so useful when you're trying to see what these people were like and what was actually going on there's some mm. lovely pictures of her there these look as though they're at home with her pets including a pet cat as well as various reptiles but she just looks so beautiful and she's letting her pet cat near near the snakes <laughs> oh look at that one I love it. yeah that's just amazing isn't it the zoo lady curator of reptiles miss joan proctor she is seen wearing one of her charges as a necklet <laughs> Brilliant. That's not something we recommend. <laughs> no, no. She was a very, very talented artist as well. And we've got some of her original drawings here. Is That's there anything she's not good at? I mean, she's just brilliant. This is, this is depressing. This is why she has to be such a role model and trailblazer. This is by her? These are all by her. So these are all the British snakes. Hmm. And then we've got another toad there. What have we got now? And this is a specially designed box for holding reptiles while she could treat them. So this is a picture of Joan and somebody else helping her with the reptile or snake through the middle of the box. And this was like her invention? Yes. I just wanted to show you this because well, I particularly like geckos and have a pet gecko. You've got a pet gecko? <laughs> yeah, I've got a pet gecko. Did you bring it in today? <laughs> no, I didn't, sorry. <laughs> I don't know that she likes the journey on the tube. <laughs> that would have been so cool if you'd said, and the next object is my pet gecko. What's your gecko called? Um, Love Day. <laughs> it was after a character in a movie. Love Day. <laughs> yes. That's next week on Objectivity. <laughs> so that's a gecko. And then this is the actual published print, which was published in our proceedings. On it's the, the same picture though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's just so beautiful, isn't it? It's a good reproduction. This is where we come to the sad part of the story though, is mm. she died very young. She was only 34, so she died in 1931. <laughs> so she achieved a huge amount in a very short time, but she was very unhealthy throughout her life and died very young. Right. Um, so she's remembered today at Z Sell by the reptile house itself. Yes. The fact that we have a bust in there by George Alexander of her. And then at Whipsnade Zoo. This is, this is kind of like the other part of the zoo that is outside London. This is a 1936 guide and she used to go and convalesce at Whipsnade mm. and we actually have a road named after her going through the middle of the zoo. So is this road still there now at yes, Whipsnade? Yes it is and it's still called Miss Jones Ride. Yeah. And she also had some animals named after her. Yes, there was a, both a turtle and a snake. Yep. And this is the paper in which the snake is named after her. So it's some um, reptiles from Tanganyika, which is now Tanzania. And it's this particular species here. Geodipus proctore. I mean, I just think she's such an amazing woman and she so much. And we do want to encourage more women to follow in her footsteps, really, and have an interest in STEM subjects. Joan Proctor, I had never heard of her until today, and now she is one of my heroes. <laughs> She's definitely one of mine as well. The pages that I have bookmarked are the ones that are quite important to us and, well, to everyone, really. And these are the famous Darwin's finches. So Darwin brings back these finches from the various islands around the Galapagos. And John Gould notices that the beaks are all different to each other. And these are the finches that are thought to have given the idea to Darwin that not everything was just created as it was, that things have evolved to fit their environment. 